Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep IAS. Before we start with our today's analysis, we have two important announcements. Baiju's exam prep IAS would be conducting a national scholarship test on 3rd of July 2022. How do you register? Follow the link given in the description box, give the necessary information and you would be able to win some attractive scholarships. The next announcement is in reference to the weekly current affairs explain session. As part of the explain session, our tomorrow's discussion would be Maharashtra's political crisis and anti-defection law. What is the anti-defection law? What is the flow test? What is to do with the anti-defection law's concerns? Everything will be explained in our tomorrow's session. And this session will be handled by Sir Matsa. So please do tune in on our YouTube channel live from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. tomorrow. Let's get started and look into the first article. The first article says solving problems through the Internet of Things. The article here is speaking about applications of Internet of Things and the challenges associated with it and what is the way forward to ensure that there is minimal security threat to these applications. First up, what is this Internet of Things? As the very name denotes, you have two words. One is Internet, the other is Things. So Internet is the platform where you have multiple interrelated computing device. It can be mechanical and digital machines. It can be objects as well. It can be animals or people. Each of them are given a unique identifier and they start transferring data amongst each other making use of the internet. So you have multiple devices, multiple objects, multiple things. These are connected on internet as a platform. This is what is called as internet of things. So internet is acting as a platform. To this internet, what you have is multiple devices that are connected and from this device what you are sending is data and this data will be stored on the server and ultimately what you will have is interactions creating what is called as exchange of data. So any devices that can be connected will be connected. Any devices that can be switched on and off will be connected and most of the connected device will have an internet protocol address with IPv6 billions of devices can be connected with is. Let's take some of the examples. Let's say you are a working personnel. So you have to take care of the senior citizens at home, but you cannot stay at home because you have to work. You have to take care of your family, but you also have an apprehension that if you allow the caretaker, they may not take care of the senior citizens at the home. So what do you do? You install the CCTVs at your home. So you go to the office as well. And once in a while, you keep monitoring the CCTVs. So the CCTV is put in your home you would be able to see what is happening at your home and there is an application on your mobile where you would be able to see what is happening at your home via the mobile through the CCTV connection. So this is an application of Internet of Things. You are at your office, your CCTV at is your home, but there is data transfer that is happening simultaneously and with the application on your mobile, you would be able to see what is happening at your house. This is an example of what is called as Internet of Things. Let's take simple examples. We have the smartphones. We also have the smart watches as well. We have the fitness bands. All this is an example of the Internet of Things. If you look at the larger level, if we are constructing a smart city or a smart village or you have everything that is connected to the internet or if you are speaking about the cars as well, even they have something called as the technological advancement which is built on this very platform of what is called as internet of things. If we are able to take simplest of things, let's say for example, you have a light bulb. This light bulb can also be switched on using a smartphone. It means that you are using internet of things. If you are taking a bigger one, let's say you have the smart cities where you are filling this entire region with sensors, you will be able to control these sensors in that environment. That is internet of things. So any natural or man-made object that can be assigned an internet protocol and there is exchange of data over the network is what is called as internet of things. So different networks would be connected to each other 
like body area network which is wearables local area network smart homes wide area network connected cars and very wide area network which is nothing but smart city now the question is how does this internet of things work when we speak about internet of things let me give you an example a thing in the internet of things can be a person where there is a heart monitor implant that is placed on that person it can be a farm animal as well with a biochip transponder or it can also be an automobile which has some inbuilt sensors to alert the driver when the tire pressure is low all of this is internet of things so how does it work in internet of things what we have is an ecosystem that we have developed in this ecosystem what we will have is the web enabled smart device so this web enabled smart device can be a smartphone it can also be computer as well so this will be embedded into the system then you will also have advanced processors sensors communication hardware which will be able to collect the data send and act and receive the data in that particular device so basically in the iot devices what you will have is a sensor that will collect all the information and this information is collected from the iot devices and the data is sent via the router or the gateway it will reach the internet network this will also have a data storage and ultimately you would be able to remote control many of the things that are placed in the internet of things so the devices communicate with each other they act and play the information bits between each other and the devices need not have to have any human intervention let's say for example you have your smartwatch so the smartwatch that you tie on your hand need not have any human intervention that is the watch will work on its own the number of steps that you walk it will be able to showcase it all that you require is a smartphone and you also require is a smartwatch so there is minimal intervention but it is able to store as well so this is the ecosystem that is created so you would have internet as a platform you would have iot devices it will be able to exchange data store it on the cloud and ultimately when you want to retrieve it you would be able to retrieve it and this will help in simplifying the life of the people so what is the significance or what are the advantages of the internet of things in the daily life it can be used to do small tasks in daily life such as coffee making as soon as the owner of the house returns home refrigerator indicating that vegetables need to be bought or ordering them automatically from the e store industry can used to reduce human error increase efficiency and improve productivity in agriculture internet of things can be used to improve overall productivity by enhancing weather forecasting soil nutrient content pest infestation in healthcare there are several benefits to the medical industry better diagnosis of diseases wearable monitors of vitals sophisticated connected equipment we did discuss about a person with the heart monitor implant as well that is another addition to the health sector then we have transportation where it can be used at toll booths traffic management driverless cars it can also be used in fleet management safety assistance improved logistics these are the advantages companies can use iot to analyze and predict consumer behavior it can be used in big data and data mining and as we discussed it can be used in smart cities and government policies and services will also be able to use the internet of things to deliver advanced services to the people so when we speak about all these ideas the internet of things is simplifying the process for us so we would be able to live a healthy life work smarter and gain control of our lives in the environment iot enables companies to also automate the process as well this will also reduce the labor cost as well they would be able to monitor the overall business processes as well improve the customer experience with respect to an application save time as well as money enhance employee productivity and at the same time they would also be able to make more profits more revenue and able to take much better business decisions these are some of the advantages where they would be able to access information from anywhere any time on any devices that which is connected to the internet via this platform so improved communication between all these connected electronic devices will help in enhancing our lives 
these are some of the advantages or the applications with respect to the internet of things but what are the concerns when we speak about challenges or the concerns there is loss of jobs because of the replacement of humans with machines automation will naturally bring in job losses so when you are putting in the machines in place of the human beings obviously it means there can be efficiency which can be improved the errors could be controlled as well but the problem is the machines are replacing the human beings all those work that were done by the human beings is now being performed by the machines which ultimately means there is job losses this is the major problem with this internet of things safety and privacy is also a major challenge in this domain as the number of connected devices go on increasing there is more information that is being changed and as a result you have hackers who would be able to steal the information and this ultimately means that your data your data which is important to you your secret data sensitive data can be hacked and that is where the privacy will get violated in fact when you have too many devices that is connected on to this platform there can also be information exchange which may also miss at times as well and if there is a bug in the system what is a bug basically there is an error it is not working as per the expectations in that case what you will have is a bug it is likely to infect every other connected device as well and ultimately what you will have is these issues which will also make the internet of things suffer so these are some of the issues and challenges but the primary issue is to do with privacy and also remember when it comes to the internet of things the cost of establishing it will also be more as well why what you will require is internet you will also require complicated data transfer from one device to another and at the same time you also require security bugs which has to be patched up and at the same time you require equipment to keep your internet of things work in an efficient manner so the cost over a period of time will also increase so in order to overcome all these issues what we require is a structure what we require is some of the reforms and mechanisms that we may have to take up in india the government of india envisages using the internet of things as per the digital india mission the national digital communications policy was launched in 2018 to develop and apply internet of things 5g technology machine to machine communication the government also permitted 100% fti in the telecom sector and this should aid the development of internet of things in india so going forward if internet of things has to be successful which it is taking a turn towards what we have to ensure is security for all these apparatus so what are the measures that we may have to take one is no universal default passwords let's say for example you have your smartphones let's say for example you have other devices that is connected to the internet each of which may have its own password let's say the password is 1234 or it can be 111111 these are the default passwords that are set to these device let's assume so so the minute you get these devices you have to immediately change it so the all iot default passwords should be changed immediately as soon as possible and the passwords must not be resettable to any universal default value so whatever passwords that comes with the default device you have to change it immediately you have to change it in such a way that you follow some of the best standard practices that's the first one the second is to do with implementing a means to manage reports of vulnerabilities what do we mean by it we have number of vulnerabilities let's say for example there is an issue with whatsapp or there is an issue with the software that you are using so there is another device that you have it is not working it is hanging every now and then so it means that there is a vulnerability or there is a intrusion of the virus or something like that so the minute you realize that there is a problem with that particular device or with the software that is built on this internet of things as a platform all these will have to go on a central repository all of this information will have to go to a central database so whenever a device is built if there is an issue the operating system should constantly keep checking for it and if it finds out that there is a bug there is a problem it should immediately send a message to the central database or the central repository so that eventually they are able to address this bug and introduce a security patch so what we require is a means to manage report 
reports of the vulnerabilities so in case there is a vulnerability report the same to the central database the central database is able to actualize it and able to implement all the security patchups to this particular issue we also need to keep the software updated what do we mean by it just because we have got the software it doesn't mean that we let go things it has to be constantly updated whatever the company does let's say for example windows or let's say for example apple or any other company for that matter or any other software that you are using let's say you're using microsoft word this company will constantly keep checking what is called as the bugs in that particular software the minute they see there is a security threat they immediately release security patches in the updated version so making sure that you also keep your software updated is what you have to do to keep your internet of things and its devices safe and secure securely store sensitive security parameters let's say for example you have some sensitive information this sensitive information has to be stored in a proper manner it can be the credentials it can be the certificates it can be key identity of an individual so such information should be unique per device and should be implemented in such a manner that it is tamper proof then we have to minimize exposed attack surfaces what do we mean by it in case we are making use of a hardware and we are not using its functionality this hardware should be disabled hardware should not unnecessarily expose access so required ports both network as well as logical should be closed if we are not using it making it easy for users to delete user data and at the same time devices and services should also have the mechanism such that if people have any personal data if they wish to remove from the software or from the device they should ultimately have the ownership to delete it whenever they wish to and they wish to dispose of from this particular device so all this needs to be followed if the security of internet of things is taken into picture it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article now let's look into the next article this article says a direct approach to conservation the article here is speaking about payments for ecosystem services what is this payments for ecosystem services this happens to be one of the innovative approaches basically for the nature's conservation what exactly happens this is where a variety of arrangements comes into picture where you would have the buyer you would also have the seller who is a buyer a buyer is a person who is buying a particular service a seller is a person who is selling a particular service in the environment so basically you enter into a contractual obligation where a person or an organization is performing certain environmental service for you indeed because you have taken that particular service you are ensuring that you pay back something to the person who has given you this service so pes is one way to conserve and increase the ecosystem services it works through the establishment of performance contracts people who can help provide the desired ecosystem service are rewarded based on their actions or the quantity and quality of the services themselves so basically what we are trying to do is bring about an understanding between the buyer and the seller on the other side we are also incentivizing those sellers introducing behavioral changes so that this can be considered as the broader class of incentive that we are giving to the seller so that they would continue to provide this environmental service to the people in that particular region so basically what is happening let's say for example there is a park this park is taken care by people on their own so what is happening here there are people who come and use this particular park they also walk in this particular park as well then they also see the beauty of this park as well so there is an organization or a certain set of people who are taking care of this park and as a result because they are taking care of it you have to pay them certain money or an incentive so that they continue to take care of it even if there are people who are not taking of it we are bringing a big behavioral change so that people take care of it so what we have is an environmental service which is given by the people so you have the sellers of this environmental service and you become the buyer and pay them back so that there is synchronized relationship between the buyer as well as the seller so pes is just one way of conserving the environment let me give you more examples let's say for example there is a lake 
and this lake should be prevented from any pollutants. So if there is a party who is taking care of this lake which is used for let's say farming or it is used for drinking purposes. So there is an organization which is taking care of the lake or this lake can also be used for flood mitigation as well. So there is an organization or there are few individuals who are taking care of this lake. So making sure that when they are taking care of this lake as a service we are providing some money to them or the government institutes an institute to monitor this so that these people continue to take care of the lake at the cost of some fee is what is called as payment for ecosystem services so there are certain people there are some organizations they're taking care of the environment as well as the ecosystem because they're taking care of the environment you are paying them some money which is called as the payments for ecosystem services how does this work what does it constitute let's say for example carbon sequestration and storage let's say there are people in the forest areas the people in the forest areas continue to take care of the forest ideally you could have developed you could have continued with the deforestation as well you can chop off the forest as well in this particular area people are not chopping off the forest they are not felling the trees but instead they continue to take care of the forest and when you continue to take care of the forest it indirectly adds to carbon sequestration it helps in combating even the carbon emissions as well so when you consider states like northeast of india what they are able to do is because they have large scale forests you also have the finance commission which has given them incentives so what are we doing here we are paying them for the ecosystem services even if they go ahead with development even if they start destroying all these forest areas we do not have the trees which will suck all the excess carbon and ultimately it is us who will be the sufferers so there will be excessive pollution and as a result because they have maintained the forest they do not go ahead with the development they are compromising on one thing they have an opportunity cost to take care of and as a result some of us or the government will have to pump in money for the opportunity cost that they have lost and at the same time let's say for example landscape beauty that is eco tourism so there is a park there is another forest area or any of the community reserves as well in that case if there are people who are taking care of it you have to pay for such services is what is called as the payments for ecosystem services so this is based on an incentive based ecosystem where a person would be imposed with charges tradable permits subsidies will be accorded and market friction reductions will also take place so there is direct regulation by the government there is public provision as well there are private contracts that are also entered into and then there is voluntary and educational approaches all of these are approaches that we have to ensure that a certain service is provided and as a result you pay them back so that this service continues to be provided so what is the significance when we speak about what is the significance of it what exactly happens let's say if there are people who are going on and safeguarding a certain forest this will help in prevention of the pollution and at the same time we will also be conserving as well and at the same time we will also reduce the poverty as well how are we going to reduce the poverty let's say for example there are people who are providing you this service and you in turn are providing them some incentives or money as well so when you are providing some money to them this means that poverty gets reduced on one side the pollution is reduced and at the same time they are taking care of the environment and this will also be sustainable as well so development is happening they are giving something to the future generation as well while well, all of this is happening you pay them back and this payment will also help in mitigating what is called as the poverty so so there is dual goals of conservation and poverty elevation towards the achievement of the sustainable developmental goals but what are the concerns here the concerns is that if we have to mobilize it the mobilization of private and public finances also is not working out either the government has to work out or you need the personal motivation of the private people you also require the civil society to take it into picture but if these do not come into picture ultimately the one who is giving this particular service may not be motivated there are few exemptions as well they are beyond all this this kind of incentive motivation but there are few people whose morale increase because someone is giving recognition to them because someone is recognizing their efforts so if 
these efforts have to continue the government has to pitch in the private has to pitch in the civil society has to pitch in so as of now these people are not showing that much of support is the first major challenge the second major challenge is in terms of the research whenever there is a safeguarding or there are certain section of people who are investing their time onto something you should be knowing what is the outcome to that what is it helping out all this has to be categorized so this will further require academic research governmental support political will so that this is taken into picture to understand the future outcomes these are some of the concerns and the challenges but if you look into how this implementation has worked across the global level in the western cape south africa the cape nature stewardship program protects the biodiversity on the private land kitengela kenya's wildlife conservation lease program maintains open areas for wildlife and grazing on personal ground in terms of raising money ps programs such as costa rica's pago por cervicos and equidor soria bosque were among the few to mobilize significant finances as well so in the indian subcontinent this has not taken much of advantage but when it comes to the global community they have been investing a lot of time and energy and finances as well to ensure that this is taken into picture what are the issues that we currently have one is we do not have the institutions we require is a solid institution mechanism the government has to appoint certain institute or it has to motivate people as well and at the same time what you require is the local monitoring group as well since there is absence of the institute as well as the local monitoring mechanism this has led to the major problematic area in the implementation of these services what is the way forward impact evaluation studies that evaluate financial instruments performance in attaining biodiversity are important so we need to make sure that studies are conducted researches are conducted so in case a particular service is being provided how will it impact the society such should be taken up the oecd biodiversity finance and the economic business case for action highlighted the importance of evaluating financial instruments performance in attaining biodiversity goal according to recent oecd research few thorough impact evaluation studies have been done for terrestrial biodiversity and fewer for ocean maritime biodiversity the oecd advocates comprehensive impact evaluation and the formulation of strategic criteria to help determine which policies or initiatives warrant more scrutiny additionally a strong policy thrust such as teeb india initiative highlighting the economic consequences of the loss of biological diversity would help prioritize ecosystem restoration financing through a direct approach what do we mean by it if let's say for example there is a forest in a particular locality the forest is indirectly helping in cutting down on the carbon emissions because it is sucking the carbon but if this forest is removed what will be the economic consequences environmental consequences health consequences if forest is removed pollution can increase if pollution increase people also start inhaling polluted gas if they start inhaling polluted gas their health gets impacted so indirectly they are also contributing to their own misery and this also means they have to shell out more money as well as a result everything is interlinked so whenever there is a problem to do with the environment it is acting indirectly on other areas as well so you have to conduct that study says teeb initiative so this particular initiative focused on three important ecosystems one is the forest inland wetlands as well as coastal and maritime ecosystem a global initiative such as united nations environment program finance initiative to mobilize private sector finance to benefit people and the environment would help maintain the funds so more money has to be infused to understand how this entire processes work so basically there are a number of options to what constitutes this payment for ecosystem services but what we have to identify is how each of these different parameters work differently and we have to select them according to our own impact basis so this article currently goes on to say that we have to collect strong scientific data and only after that is collected that is when this kind of payment services can be enabled it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article now let's look into the next article this article says speeding major cause of death says the lancet study there was a study conducted by lancet according to it if steps are taken to check vehicle speeds 
on roads in India, this could alone have the biggest impact on ensuring road safety by saving as many as 20,554 lives. When we consider this study, this study basically goes on to say that people are dying every day on the road accidents. What are the four areas or four issues when it comes to the road accidents? One is drunk driving. Second is people are not using the helmets. Third is to do with speeding. And fourth, in spite of repeatedly saying that please use the seat belts, people are not using it. And because they are not using it, this has also raised a couple of concerns. And when they don't use it, when they there is accidents that take place in some cases this is also leading to loss of lives as well so when it comes to road accidents these are the major areas according to the lancet study that drunken driving helmet use speeding and seat belt use have become the major impediments and if we are able to address all these concerns we would be able to prevent the loss of lives in india interventions to check speeding could save as many as 20554 lives and promotion of crash helmets could save about 5683 lives and if we look into statistics at the global level steps undertaken to reduce speeding such as infrastructure change and electronic speed control could save as many as 3,47,258 lives globally each year. While measures to tackle drunk driving such as enhanced enforcement could also save 16,304 lives and estimated 1,21,083 and 15,1698 lives could be saved by enforcing rules on wearing seat belts and motorcycle helmets. Further, the article also notes road traffic injuries are 8th leading cause of death globally for all ages and the first cause in the 5 to 29 years age group close to 14 lakh people die each year and up to 5 crore are injured by road traffic injuries india accounts for almost 10 percent of all crash related deaths while accounting for only 1% of the world vehicles. This is the pathetic situation in India that if we do not follow the traffic rules, if we do not have the right enforcement, this could lead to more casualties in the near future. What is the way forward? Any vision for addressing road traffic injuries will also have to take into picture planet Earth's changing climate. So we have to take into picture the climate of planet Earth. Why? That is because if more vehicles are on the road, what will it have? It will have pollution impact to the people. And when there is more pollution in the market, this could result in health related issues. More health related issues, this will ultimately impact the health of the people and more people may also lose. So directly road accidents kill people and indirectly more the number of vehicles, more will be the emissions, more the emissions. This will also impact their health because they will have lung related issues and ultimately directly and indirectly these vehicles are contributing to the loss of the people. So encouraging less vehicle ownership instead incentivizing the use of more sustainable public transport and making sure that we have more people pulling the vehicles, walking, cycling are the potential benefits in the near future. Added to it, if there are less vehicles on the road, it will lead to less accidents as well and over a period of time, we would be able to control the pollution and thus loss of biodiversity in the urban areas. So because we have to construct more roads, what do we do? We fell the trees as well and ultimately it is increasing the pollution. So on a longer run, we have to reduce the world's reliance on the road transport. We have to bring in more public transport. People should be encouraged to take up public transport and as a result everything can be checked says this article so a move towards more sustainable forms of transport with fewer carbon emissions would help avoid adverse impacts of climate change on health and road traffic injuries cannot be taken up in an isolated manner everything is connected it is a multi-sector approach that is taken into picture so what we require is when we speak about road accidents it is not just about the individuals the government will have to come into picture, the private sector and its technology will come into picture, the civil society will have to follow the rules as well. So it is not about whether that particular person is driving safely. What about the potholes that
that are present on the road. These potholes will have to be taken care by the government. If the government takes care, but if a person is not driving in a safe manner, this will also lead to road accidents. So this is a not an isolation approach, but instead what you require is an integrated approach where all these communities come together and ultimately fight the menace of road accidents is what is this article all about. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. Now let's look into the next article. This article says how Turkey made peace with Sweden and Finland joining NATO. The article here is speaking about Sweden and Finland joining NATO. We have discussed about this issue. We have also discussed why Turkey was little reluctant in accepting Sweden and Finland into the NATO. When it comes to NATO, what they require is the consensus. But Turkey was not giving permission to it because it had its own apprehensions. What are these apprehensions? Why did Sweden and Finland want to join NATO? All of this has been explained previously in our big news video the same link will be given in the description box so please look into it what are we going to discuss under this article under this article we will try and understand what is the advantage for NATO right now we will also try and understand what is the memorandum signed between Sweden Finland as well as Turkey when it comes to Turkey Turkey was not happy because historically when it comes to Sweden and Finland's idea they believe in rule of law they also believe in democracy as well. When it comes to Turkey, there are some extremist organizations according to Turkey. These extremist organizations are protected in Sweden. So Turkey says that these are the people who are fighting against Turkey, but these are the people who are protected in Sweden and Finland because they are against Turkey, but they are protected by Sweden and Finland. We cannot accept them into NATO. But now Sweden and Finland now go on to say that in case we have any of these people who are going against Turkey in our countries, we will extradite them to Turkey and we will ensure such people are not present in Sweden as well as Finland. First, Finland and Sweden should promise to address counter-terrorism provisions within their countries is the first objective given by Turkey and Finland has committed to modify its criminal code and Sweden has assured to implement new terrorist offences act. So in case there are people who are terrorists in Turkey and are currently seeking shelter in Sweden and Finland, they will be extradited and at the same time they will come up with new criminal codes and terrorist codes that in case they are present suitable actions will be initiated against such people. Second, Turkey has raised concerns about Finland and Sweden being home to Kurdish activists and militant organizations. Therefore, Finland and Sweden have now agreed to execute pending deportations, extraditions from these countries to Turkey. Third, it will help in lifting the arms embargo as well. So these were the conditions laid by Turkey and Sweden and Finland have now accepted all these conditions. Earlier, they had not accepted before joining NATO. Now they have accepted. Why? That is because they sense that Russia's aggression needs to be controlled and in case Russia becomes so aggressive that it will be a problematic for these countries. These are small countries. They have very small army. They would not be able to withstand the pressure of Russia. So if they have to withstand the pressure of this aggressive Russia, they require the support of NATO for them right now their own security is important other countries people's security may not be important so they will expedite these so-called terrorists according to Turkey from Sweden and Finland back to Turkey so that their borders are secured which is why they have signed this memorandum. What is the advantage for NATO? The minute Sweden and Finland are now into NATO this is going to be promising for NATO. How? First it will strengthen the alliance. We will have more countries into NATO. We have Finland and Sweden which earlier had non-aligned principles. They did not want to join NATO. They did not want to support even Russia as well. They were completely non-aligned. Now because they are joining NATO more more countries are into this forum. This ultimately means more strength to the NATO. This will strengthen the alliance. Second, NATO will gain strategic ground to counter Russia. What is happening right now? When you look at Russia, it has its border. But what is happening? There are more countries in the eastern border. So United States of America and NATO would be able to place more missiles along the border areas as well. Third, they would also be able to secure Euro-Atlantic region as well. Earlier, it was the land countries which they were able to take care of. Now, they would also safeguard the Baltic states 
states like Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. These countries were earlier at the risk of Russia as well. Now, because you have the NATO forces, they would be able to take care of this entire region. So, weapons such as 5th generation aircraft, technological weapon systems, strong political institutions across all the allied countries will help the prevention of aggression of Russia into this area. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. Now, let's look into the next article. This article says the Indian challenge in Afghanistan. This article has been explained in the last one week as well. We did discuss about the Gurudwara attack that happened in Afghanistan. What are India's interests in Afghanistan? And we did discuss in our last week CNA as well that we have officials from India who also spoke to Taliban. Why did India speak to Taliban? What are the challenges in Afghanistan? What are India's security interests? All this has been explained in the last week CNA. So you don't have to go through this article. All that you have to do is watch the Big News Initiative video on Gurudwara as well as India's officials visit to Afghanistan and their interaction with Taliban. If you understand that, you don't have to go through this article. Now let's look into the main practice questions. What do you understand by Internet of Things? Discuss its various applications and ways to safeguard applications from potential risk. Discuss the benefits of payments for ecosystem services. So please write all your answers on the comment section, peer review and do give positive feedback to your friends answers. So this is for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.